Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Akram and you are watching Knowledge360. In the previous videos, we have covered the topic of constraints in PostgreSQL database. And in this video, we are going to cover the topic of system columns in PostgreSQL database. In this video, we will see how we can explain the system columns available in PostgreSQL database and their usefulness. So, the PostgreSQL tables include system columns that are automatically created for each table and these columns store metadata about the table and its rows and they are reserved for the internal use and we cannot create another table column with the same name. So there are several system columns available in PostgreSQL database. Let's see them one by one. The first system column that we are going to discuss about is table OID. The table OID contains the object identifier of the table that contains the row and the and table OID is useful for identifying the specific table in partition or inheritance hierarchies of tables. So let's see with an example. First we create a table called parent table and then we create a table called child table that inherits the parent table. So both the tables are created now we will insert records into both the table okay the data are inserted now now if we query the table parent table we will get the two record but to know which record are coming from which table so for that we can select the table oid so this shows which table each row are originated from we can see the parent row value it was inserted into the parent table and the child root value was inserted into the child table. So this is how table OID works and this one is the type casting. If I remove this one, we'll get simply one ID value. Okay, so this ID value represents the tables created, parent table and child table. So we need the type casting to understand it better. Now let's see the second system column which is xmin. xmin is transaction id of the transaction that inserted the row into a table. Now let's create a table called sample table. The table is created. Now we insert one record into the table with the value as john. The record is inserted. Now if I query this, we'll see the transaction id of the data. So this is the transaction id that inserted the row. The next system column is cmin. The cmin stores the command identifier within the inserting transaction and it starts from zero just like indexing and it increments one by one for each command. So let's see that we'll use the same data. We'll insert in data into the sample table. If I insert the data sample, so let's insert the data with open transaction. Okay, you can see here the value first value john it was inserted earlier so it is having the command id as zero but for the two and three here you can see the first record is having command id as zero and the bob as one so the cmin column displays the command number that inserted each row in a transaction the next system column that we are going to discuss is xmax it holds the transaction id of the transaction that deletes the row or the by default value would be zero if the row has not been deleted so let's see by deleting the data so we have deleted the record for allies if you remember the bob cmin id was one but now the xmax id for bob is zero because the these are the record that are not deleted so the xmax displays the transaction id for each row marked as deleted the next system column that we are going to discuss is cmax. The cmax command identifier, it stores command identifier number within the deleting transaction like cmin we saw for inserting it starts from zero and increments for each modifying com commands. So let's try deleting the record. So when we delete the record bob now the remaining value is allies as zero. So the cmax shows the command number that deleted each row. The last system column that we are going to discuss is CTID. The CTID is the physical location of row version in the table. It stores as block number and the tuple index. The limitation of CTID is that it changes whenever a row is updated or the vacuum full operation is performed. Let's now create a table called employees. We insert two records into the employees table. Now if we see the CTID value. The CTID value for first record for the David is 0, 0,1 and for the second record is 0, 0,2. Now what happens when we update the record? As we know it will change the value. So the record is updated. Now again if we query it must be changed. 
so we can see here for the first record the value was 0, 0,1 which is changed to 0, 0,3 so that means whenever the record is modified the CTID value also changes now let's discuss some use cases of system columns the system columns are useful for debugging or understanding table inheritance whenever we query the partition table or the inheritance hierarchical table they are also useful for identifying row origins in partition tables there are some key points also we need to discuss for the system columns you should try to avoid using ctid as a long term identifier instead we should use the primary keys these system columns are powerful tools for advanced users and database administrators to understand row states and the transaction details effectively so in this video we have covered the topic of system columns in postgresql database if the video was helpful do like the video and subscribe the channel to get the notifications for upcoming videos in the next video we'll cover the topic of modifying tables in that we'll see how we can alter the columns we can change the name of the table we can add a new data type table column all of those in the next videos so subscribe the channel to get the notifications let's meet in the next video till then take care bye bye